Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of CCIR Student Spotlight. With us today is Roy Ganju, um, who is a current sophomore at the United World College of Southeast Asia in Dover, Singapore. Um, for his time at CCIR, um, Roy took on a course with Dr. Harold Wydra from the University of Cambridge focused on post-Soviet geopolitics and international relations. Um, for his final project, Roy focused on um, Israel, which he's going to share a little bit more about. Um, but to begin, Roy, thank you so much for joining this meeting. Thank you so much for having me here. So I guess if I had to delve into my project a bit, uh, the title of my project is Next Year in Jerusalem, Understanding the Evolution of Political Identity and Affiliation Among Mizrahi and Russian-Speaking Populations in Israel. And while that might sound completely uh, unrelated to what the content of the course was, I think there was a lot of inspiration that I took from many of the materials we uh, accessed during the course. Because a large part of the course is about international relations, but a lot of it also centers around issues of identity, issues of perception. Uh, and the politics of history uh, in, in Russia, because uh, a key part of many contemporary issues we're seeing, especially in regions such as Ukraine, is the issue of how Russia grapples with seeing itself as being both a victim and a victor, uh, as I believe one of our readings during the course put it. And I think it's all these different perspectives that push me towards pursuing this a uh, project which I would have to admit is quite broad, yet at the same time, very narrow. Mm -hmm. So let's let's pull the trace back a little bit and begin from the beginning. So Roy, why don't you first tell us um, why you were initially interested in this particular course with Dr. Vaidra? So I've always had a, a great interest in, in international relations and I've always followed politics from a very young age. I, I remember one of my earliest memories is, is of, the, of the Arab Spring, because as, as a very young child, I was fond of learning about ancient Egypt. And, and I, when I saw Egypt on the television, it certainly wasn't only about pyramids. There was, I still remember there was crowds of people uh, in the streets fighting for, for democracy. And, and as a little kid, you don't really comprehend this. But I've, I've always had an interest in reading about politics uh, since then. And when I heard of this opportunity to, to take this course with Professor Wydra, I was immediately drawn to it uh, because I saw that I had the opportunity to not only further my understanding on a topic that was very current, especially given the circumstances of the war in Ukraine, but also a topic which, which I believe I would love to research about because you often don't get opportunities to research in common school life. So I think... Taking the course also was partly affected by, uh, by, by my wish to research and to learn how to research. So why don't we talk a little bit about that as well? So you talked about how um, the way of learning with research is quite different and working with Dr. Wydra is surely quite different than common school. Um, what, have, what has been sort of some of the most difficult aspects of making this transition or maybe some of the most exciting? I think there's two key issues here. I think one of, of independence and I think another of, of, man, of time management. Uh, I think the course which I took, which was during the fall winter session, uh, also coincided with the school term. So unlike a summer course, I wasn't exactly free the whole time. There was often conflicting uh, arrangements when it came to things such as school productions or school examinations. and I obviously couldn't always devote time uh, to, to some of our materials, but I think what's very good about the course is with the small class sizes of around five, there was, I believe, five students in my course, uh, we were able to help each other when one of us had to perhaps miss, a, miss one of the lectures or had to uh, sit out of one of the readings. And we were able to keep discussions alive. We were able to really keep things going. I think what's exciting is also the independence that uh, you could, that when it came to the readings, uh, you could really summarize them and, and show what you felt about the readings to the professor uh, during the first lecture stage uh, of the program. And I think the program was also very flexible in some ways. Uh, I recall that during the early stages of the program, everyone was really interested in a lot of the readings about Russian identity uh, and post-Soviet identity and culture. 
and the professor was willing to devote time to this. Uh, and perhaps we spent a bit, a bit less time learning about American foreign policy or Russian foreign policy, but I think everybody got to explore topics which they found to be interesting. So I think the flexibility was, was really amazing. Cool, that's excellent to hear. Um, and part of the course is being designed on the basis of the Oxbridge Cambridge tutorial system. So this flexibility is something that has a bit of a tradition as well. Um, so I wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about what it was like working with your peers in particular. Um, one of the distinctive things about CCIR is that we get students from all over the world and also who happen to be very interested in very specific things um, at the same time. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. Um, was this um, something that facilitated your experience or, uh, yeah. It was, I think it was personally amazing uh, because our group of five all went on to do very different projects. Uh, if I recall, there was one project about Belarus and Belarus's place and its foreign pol policy. There was uh, another project about uh, South Korea and neo-colonialism, uh, while mine is about Israel. So there's all of these varied interests, all of these varied topics. And the during the research phase, the second phase of, of the course, we were able to discuss and, and further develop the other's ideas. So I, I can remember going into discussions about how important the union state is to Belarus and then Sim and then jumping uh, jumping over to a conversation about different models of capitalism and whether South Korea's developmentalism was South Korea ab abandoning the US's commitment to free trade and free market principles. So again, there's a multidisciplinary uh, nature to international relations. So we, I guess, covered a lot of topics and obviously my peers were, were some, some of my peers were older and had more experience with research and they were able to, to help me out because this was my first uh, time going into doing any kind of research. So I think, I think it was very good to have uh, this uh, experience with the group in terms of both discussion and being helped by my peers. Okay, great. So that's a lot about your, your experience. Um, I probably wanna circle back and talk a little bit about um, your relationship with your mentor as well. Um, but what I want to ask about first now is to circle back to your project. Um, so in, let's say, um, as a two minute pitch, um, could you summarize sort of the general argument of your project? Well, the general argument of my, uh, of my project is to put it very simply again, uh, that the two key parts of uh, of the Israeli right wing have been Mizrahi voters, voters of Middle Eastern extraction, and voters from Russian-speaking populations. But both of them show diverging uh, trends. The Russian population is moving leftwards, whereas the Mizrahi population is still staying as a core part of this right wing bloc. And I ascribe this to several factors. So for with, with the Russian populations, there's often this idea of secularism that the that Russian populations in Israel have been affected by policies during the Soviet time of secularism, which have led to them taking a more secular approach uh, to policymaking in, in Israel, which causes conflicts with many of the religious parties that form uh, core parts of uh, Israel's right wing. And also the fact that the Russian speaking populations are able to assimilate into the larger Ashkenazi population that has already been present in Israel. Something that the Mizrahi population cannot do due to historical conflicts, uh, especially with regard to the way in which Mizrahi uh, immigrants were absorbed uh, into Israel in the 1950s and the 1960s. So those historical conflicts still play a role in the way Mizrahi voters view themselves politically and affiliate themselves with parties on the right like the Likud. Excellent. Um, and tell me a little bit about how um, I can now see the thread of connection between your project and the Russian identity stuff. Um, so can you tell me how that thread developed and how you began seeing this connection with your research project? So the way I'd put it is, I think it's very interesting learning about, I guess, the way Russia views 
itself. Uh, Professor Wider put it very succinctly in the course uh, that Russia, the Russian language rather, has two words for somebody who's Russian, Ruski and Rasyani. Somebody who is Ruski is ethnically Russian, but somebody who's Rasyani is Russian in the sense of having the nationality. And I think this idea of a dual Russian identity, one that is one that centers around the state and one that centers around ethnicity interest me, interested me quite a bit. Because I did earlier obviously know about Russian-speaking populations in, in Israel of, of Russian-speaking Jews. And I felt that it was very interesting to go in and research about this. And in my research, I did find that there was a strand within the Russian-speaking Jewish population of Israel that viewed itself in, in Russian terms, that moved to Israel because they found a place where they could be Russian while at the same time also escape a lot of the economic horrors of, uh, the, of Russia post the collapse of the Soviet Union. So I think it's very interesting to look at it from an economic perspective, but also from an ideological perspective, looking at the figures who led Russian political, Russian political movements in Israel, you see figures such as Nathan Sharansky, Yuli Yoel Edelstein. Both of them were prisoners of Zion, prisoners held for their political views, for their Zionist political views by the Soviet regime. And initially, both of them were very key politicians. Well, I remember, I recall Sharansky became the uh, Minister of the Interior in the 1990s. And I guess there's also this ideological element that is there, which pulled Russian Jews towards Israel. So it's interesting to see how Russian Jews saw themselves in relation to Russia and also to Israel, which is kind of what I guess became the spark to my project. Interesting. Um, and I wanna now trace how that spark um, eventually sort of led down the fuse line. Um, so typically with research projects, especially when it's the first time doing them, um, there's going to be a lot of back and forth, with the mentors in terms of negotiating what the, uh, what's feasible, what's realistic, what's interesting, and so on and so forth. Um, tell me about both um, your experience with Dr. Weider and do remind me again your TAs. Uh, Neville Bryan. Yes, um, and Mr. Bryan, so um, tell me a little bit about the back and forth process with your mentors and how they guide, uh, how they manage to help you through the research process in both the sort of developmental stage and sort of the execution stage of things. I think Professor Widra was very, very helpful. Both Professor Widra and, uh, and Neve were extremely helpful during this process of formulating a research question. Because at first I was, I was quite set on this. I had actually two, two kind of proposals for, for my research project. I had uh, this proposal, proposal on, on political identity and I had another proposal uh, uh, about security policy. And Professor Widra thought that this question was more developed, which is why he helped push me down the path uh, to developing this question. And at some point I felt like I was actually writing a history. And I felt like I was writing a history of of, of Russian speaking Jewish populations, that I wasn't exactly advancing an argument through my research project. And that's where Professor Widra helped me with, with giving me the idea of having a comparative, of having a comparative with another population of immigrant Jews in Israel and how they view themselves uh, in terms of their political identity. And that's where the idea of bringing in the Mizrahi Jews came in. And Professor Widra was extremely helpful uh, in terms of providing research papers uh, at first to help push me down, I guess, that path uh, of, of thinking, of analysis, of, of research. And so I think my mentors were extremely helpful in helping push me down the, the, the research journey. Yeah, excellent. Um, so as um, I have a couple more questions as we begin sort of wrapping up here. Um, one is you're still very young. You're currently in sophomore year. Um, your future is very much wide open. Um, but I do wonder how and whether this experience of doing research, because it sounds like you've been interested in this, these sorts of topics or these areas, surely for a long time. Uh, you can tell by speaking with you. 
Um, how has this particular experience figured within this overall intellectual journey of yours? Um, has it in any way changed um, your understanding of what you might be interested down the line, whether it might just be in terms of what major you want to take in, um, in, in college or maybe even bigger picture than that? I think it's, it's really the, the course has opened up a lot of majors to me. I think for one, it's definitely pushed me down the path to becoming uh, a, a poli sci major because so many of the issues that we uh, covered are extremely interesting. And I think the political science and international relations route would be something that really interests me. It already has, but I think this course has only made me more certain uh, of, of my interest. And I think the other thing is it's also made me a bit excited for college uh, because I think the independence uh, that is there during this course, and I think the, the, the breadth of topics uh, which you can cover in these kinds of courses really make me excited for college where I, where I believe the experience is extremely similar. So I think that's how the course has really uh, made me think about my future. Excellent. Um, uh, that's incredibly, incredibly encouraging to hear. Um, I remember when um, I first became excited about college, it was a little too late. Um, um, but it really <laughs> involved working with a teacher who had opened up sort of the intellectual horizon for me, um, whereby I actually came to realize, wow, um, there's so much for me to learn um, and college might be a place where I could do that. Um, by way of wrapping up, what I often like to do, um, uh, Roy, is ask students, to in one part share anything that they still feel they want to share, um, but also in particular direct this to our audience who's going to be watching this. A lot of the people who are going to be watching this are prospective students or students who are considering doing research, um, but maybe a little bit daunted. Maybe they're also a sophomore, never done research before, um, and don't know if this program is going to be too difficult, too intensive, too scary, um, too time consuming um, to be worth it. So what would you say to students who are, let's say a little bit more, um, uh, have a little bit of trepidation about embarking on something as intensive as a research project? Um, yeah, so what have you gotten out of it um, and what do you have to say to them? Well, I think if I had to really summarize it extremely quickly, I'd say I have only three words. Don't be afraid, because I think that one of the fears I had was that I would be talking to students who might be older than me, who might be much more experienced uh, than me, and that I wouldn't be able to put forward my points very well in front of them. But I think after, after the first TA session, the first lecture session, I felt like I had no apprehensions, that I felt like I had settled into the group, that I was willing to have discussions about all of these topics. So I think students feeling a bit scared about going into this project to them, if it may seem a bit daunting, if it may even seem challenging to go up against, uh, or not even against, to try and size up with people who uh, have more experience in the research field than them. I think the mentors, uh, or at least the mentors I've had, have been very helpful. And I think that at the end of the day, if if you don't try the course, I think you'll be missing out. Yeah, um, I can't speak for uh, for Neve because I've never met him, but Harold is incredibly, incredibly kind. Um, and I can only imagine that he would be extremely committed to making sure that the environment is friendly and welcoming and um, safe for students to begin feeling like they can have something to contribute to the um, conversation. So with that, Roy, um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, it was so, uh, so great to hear about your journey and your project at CCIR. Um, I wish you all the very best in terms of your future intellectual journey. I can only imagine that um, further horizons will open up as you explore this space. So thank you so much, Roy, for your time today. Mm -hmm.